So today we're going to look at something called tolerance curves. Um, tolerance curves are just kind of uh, a way of illustrating um, the set of conditions that a species can tolerate. And one way we're going to kind of look at it is we're going to go back to our population graphs that we looked at uh, a few days ago. And so if you recall, um, we graphed um, different types of, of population growth, exponential growth, and logistic growth. Um, but what's important to note is how we made those graphs. Um, on the x-axis, we had time, um, the time that the population is growing. In this case, they did number of generations, but time. And then over here, we had population size going up. So as time moved forward, um, we saw our population change and grow very rapidly uh, and then kind of slow down as it, it reached its carrying capacity. Um, so the x-axis is time and the y-axis is population. Today, we're going to take a look at a graph called a tolerance curve. And the good thing is that just like our population graphs, the y-axis is still going to be population. So we're still going to be charting the growth of a population. The only difference is instead, we're not going to be tra um, tracking the growth of a population over time. We're going to change that x-axis. And instead, it's going to be an environmental factor. So we're going to be tracking the growth of a population depending on maybe what temperature it is in their environment. or maybe how much rain or precipitation is in the environment, or how much sunlight reaches the environment. Any sort of environmental factor that you want to test to see if it has an effect on the size of a specific population of organisms in an area. So you might be like, well, I want to know, does this tree grow in areas where it's really wet or where it's really dry, or where there's a lot of light or a little light? So we're going to be plotting those environmental factors on our x-axis. So population on our y, and then let's just say, this is a great example, maybe we put temperature on our X. So you might be tracking this, this, this population. Well, how big is the population um, in areas with different temperature, whether it's hot or whether it's cold? So we might have a scale like this, maybe going from negative 10 to 40. Maybe we're looking at a plant. And we plot how big that population is in areas with different temperatures. So you can see over here, when it's 20 degrees, the population is very high. But if it gets a little hot, say about 40 degrees, the population dips down. And if it gets to about negative 10 degrees or zero degrees, our population dips down. So these areas, areas that might have a temperature of 20 degrees, those are areas we're going to find this organism predominantly. They're showing you how well organisms can tolerate a certain environment or list or live in or survive in a, a, a certain environment. And what you're going to see is they most often take the shape of a bell. So if we take a look at this, this graph over here, we call this a bell-shaped curve. Uh, you can see it kind of looks like a, a bell that you would ring, um, a little desk bell or something. It's called a bell curve with, with this big hump in the center, uh, and, then, and then it dips down to the left or to the right. And I like to think of it like the Goldilocks curve, uh, the Goldilocks in quotes. If you think about the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears, um, you can think about this temperature graph right here is a perfect example or perfect analogy to that. Um, in these areas over here, it's too cold for the population to grow. Uh, that's why the population dips down really low and maybe even hits zero. And then over here, it's too hot for this species to grow. Uh, so the population dips down and zero. But right here at 20 degrees, that's where it's just right. So you think about that story, the porridge, it's too hot here, it's too cold here, right in the middle, it's just right. This is the same true um, for this population of organism. Maybe it's a tree that can only grow in areas where the average temperature is 20 degrees. Otherwise, it's too hot, it's a desert, or it's too cold, uh, it's the Arctic. So when you think about that, uh, it's just showing you, you know, what, what are the, the best ranges for this, this population to grow. Um, and because of that, we have a kind of a set of terminology that kind of go along with the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, the first one is, is this area where it's just right. Um, so this area of the hump where the population is at its highest, we're going to call that the optimal range for this organism. So optimal range is where that organism lives the best, it thrives the best, um, you know, it's where that organism can survive. And then on the two ends over here, you have what we call the limit of tolerance. Over here, this is called your lower limit of tolerance, and this is your upper limit of tolerance. And this is as far as that species can survive into the, the too far hot or the too far cold range. Or like I said, it could be too wet or too dry. It could be too bright or too dark. Um, any, any environmental factor that you put on this x-axis down here, 
Um, but this, these limits of tolerance are where we indicate this is where the species cannot survive. It's basically where your population hits zero. Once you've hit zero, your population can't survive. Or when it hits low enough that you, you would never find any organisms there. Two or three organisms does not really make a, a full population. Um, so those are your limits of tolerance where that population hits zero and organisms can no longer survive. And then we have a couple more um, terms that you might see um, just to be familiar with it. Broad tolerance, this means that a species can survive a wide range of conditions. So I'll show you in a second, but this is when the bell curve is stretched out. So um, species can survive all sorts of temperatures or all sorts of amounts of precipitation or whatever you're tracking. Um, and then we have narrow tolerance, which is the species can only survive in a small range of conditions. And this is very important to biologists because when we look at maybe trying to protect endangered species and in, in the sort, species that have a narrow tolerance that can only exist in certain environments, they're much harder to protect than a species with a broad tolerance that can live just about anywhere. You know, for the example of oak trees, oak trees can grow anywhere they want, basically, or, or anywhere that's kind of in, in a nice temperate zone. So all over the planet. But when you look at something like maybe a, a panda bear that can only exist in very small bamboo forests, um, you know, th those areas are hard to find. They have a very narrow tolerance. Um, that they're much harder to protect because the, the, their optimal range is so much smaller. There's so much fewer conditions they can survive in. Um, so actually, this is a great example here, just this graph, where um, you can see we've, we've, we've made a, um, a tolerance curve tracking the population of an organism um, over the course of some temperature. And you can see I have three species here, three different species of organisms, species one, species two, species three, species one in blue, species two in green, species three in white. So a question on the test might just say, well, out of your three species, which one has the broadest tolerance? So looking at these three species, which one can survive the widest range of conditions? Um, you might think instantly species three, but if I'm asking for broad tolerance, I don't care how big the population is. I care about if that population can survive a wide range of conditions. So if you look at species two, it has this very wide curve. It can survive all the way from all the way from zero all the way up to almost say forty um, degrees. Um, it has very wide tolerance. It can tolerate temperature very well. Versus species three, which has a very narrow tolerance. It can only survive between like say ten and twenty five or thirty. Although its population gets much much bigger, it has a much narrow range to survive in, only 10 to 30. Um, and then I might ask you questions on a test like, you know, what is the population of species one at 20 degrees? So species one is in at blue, we're at 20 degrees, what's my population? Uh, it's about 150, 200, 175, somewhere around there. Or what? what's the population of species three at zero degrees? Uh, it's about at 50. So, so you definitely need to be able to read these graphs as well as analyze them for kind of which species can, can tolerate which conditions better. Um, and so we'll be working with these a lot to kind of just graph, um, you know, different species in different locations and how well they can survive in that environment.